Hi there. Now, in this video, what I want to do is show you how we can take y equals sine theta and differentiate it from first principles and get the result that dy d theta is equal to cosine theta. Now, what I'm going to be assuming throughout this video, though, is that you're familiar with this identity, the sine of a plus b, and also this result about limits where h is an angle that tends to zero. So let's start then. What we do is we increase the angle theta by a small amount, let's say delta theta. So what we have here is the sign now of the angle theta plus a little tiny amount, okay, delta theta. And what's going to happen is that y is going to increase by a small amount. Let's say by delta y. So we've therefore got y plus delta y equals the sine of all of theta plus delta theta. Next, what I'm going to do is subtract y from both sides. So therefore we have delta y equals the sine then of all of theta plus delta theta minus y. And the next stage is to work with the identity up here. I'm going to expand the sine of theta plus delta theta, replacing the a with theta and the b with delta theta. So as I say, you should be familiar with that identity and that will give us the sine then of theta cosine of delta theta plus the cosine then of theta sine delta theta. And then we've got the minus y here. But I'm going to replace that y then with sine theta. So we have minus sine of theta. And the next thing I'm going to do is factorize the first term here and the last term here by pulling out sine theta as a common factor between both of them. So we end up with sine theta times all of cosine delta theta. And then I've got minus one, all right, for that term there. And then We'll just put that term down plus the cosine then of theta sine delta theta. The next thing I'm going to do is divide both sides by delta theta. So I get delta y divided by delta theta is equal to this term here divided by delta theta. I can write it all over delta theta, but it's exactly the same result if I just put that part over delta theta. You'll see why in a moment. And then for this term, dividing it all by delta theta, it's just the same as dividing that factor in there by delta theta. Okay. Now, as we let delta theta tend to zero, then what happens is that delta y over delta theta tends to a limit, which we call dy by d theta. And we can pick up on this result here, which I'm taking as assumed knowledge. If we have h, a small angle, tending to zero, then sine h over h tends to 1, and the cosine of h minus 1 over h tends to 0. I haven't got h here, though. I've got delta theta instead. So that would translate to this result, that the cosine of delta theta minus 1 over delta theta tends to 0, and the sine of delta theta over delta theta tends to 1. So I can substitute these results into here and here. So what we've got here is this tends to zero and sine theta multiplied with zero is zero. And this result here is one, so cosine theta times one 
is cosine theta. So therefore, what we've got is that dy by d theta is equal to cosine of theta. So you can see that by differentiating sine theta with respect to theta, the result then is cosine theta. Okay, well, I hope you're able to follow that, and thanks for watching.